Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in this video, I'm going to expand or expound a little more on what I discussed in a comment in my previous video, that is on equivalence relations. Now, one of the first things you learn in an abstract, abstract algebra, algebra class is uh, the concept of equivalence relation. And it's a whole lot of obfuscated garbage, as you'll see shortly. But it leads into all sorts of things. For example, you get uh, the theory of uh, uh, congruences and modulo operations and everything else that you can think of um, in terms of those concepts. So <laughs> th this is text I copied out from a university website. and. It is normally how this garbage is taught. So it, first of all, it defines, it says, let us assume that R be a relation on the set of ordered pairs of positive integers on these integers, um, if and only if. So it gives a condition that R is a relation if and only if AD is equal to BC, right? So that's, that's a given. And then it says, is R an equivalence relation? Well, uh, the modus operandi says that you first have to show that R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So, first of all, uh, reflexive, reflexivity is absolute garbage because um, we know that given any object, it must be equal to itself. Okay, so it has a relation with itself. What is a relation? It's equal to itself. Okay, so um, uh, whatever r is whatever the particular relation r is in this case it's equivalence or equality uh, means that there's nothing to prove in the reflexive property because a is equal to a or object is equal to object any object that is the same object so for all pairs of positive integers it says that uh, a these two pairs are part of r of the relation right um, which is a set by the way so, and the operation is basically some operation that shows equality. So, and then it says clearly, whenever you see this word clearly, <laughs> you should automatically get a red flag pop up in your mind because those absolute morons called abstract algebra, algebra lecturers and math professors um, don't know what the fuck they're talking about, okay? And it, it, clearly what follows after that, clearly what follows after that is that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay, so it says clearly we can say AB is equal to AB for all positive integers. Excuse me. A and, then, and then notice the conclusion. Hence, the reflexive property is proved. No, nothing has been proved. And um, th there's nothing clearly about where we can say AB is equal to AB because it's a given okay so it's 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 not clear from the point of view of their proof it's clear that it's equal to itself but there's nothing clear about these two sentences about the sentence here clearly we can say a b is equal to a b for all positive integers right so make a note of that in your mind whenever you see clearly immediately trigger your bullshit flag so nothing has been proved here and of course we know from euclid's elements that um and his common notions that an object that is equal uh, to any other object will be equal to an object that equals to both of them, right? So that's a kind of, that's a trans a, a transitive property there. But any object is obviously equal to itself, right? Because if it's not, then you obviously have a problem. I mean, if you say I've got a and and then in the next uh, breath you say a is not equal to a well what what the hell are you talking about okay so the reflexive property is is a lot of garbage n unnecessary not needed and they're not saying anything and then they move from this to the uh, symmetric property so the symmetric property basically just uh, switches the two conditions so here you could sort of say oh, all right well if you have uh, uh, Larry is taller than Sally, 
then you can switch it around and say Sally is taller than Larry, right? So, uh, but that's the property, that is the property taller than. It's not the property equals to, okay? And we here we're dealing with the property of equality. So you cannot say Harry, if Harry equals Sally, because you know before you say that, that Harry is not equal to Sally, okay? So you cannot assume that uh, you can make even such a condition in the first place. And so then look at the utter, utter BS that follows. It says, if the ordered pair is an element of R, then AD is equal to BC and CB is equal to DA. These things here were assumed, okay? It, it's, it's, there's nothing, since multiplication is commutative, now note that blundering idiot David Mill in his article was saying that um, the way to, to define melt, he, he was saying we define the operations of addition and multiplication on F by, by this uh, relationship, by this, uh, this equivalence relation. Okay, so in other words, he already assumed it. There's nothing to, uh, there's nothing to be done there. So since multiplication is commutative, <laughs> you know, if I had a dollar for every time these blundering fools said associative, commutative, distributive, I'd be a millionaire because none of that is actually even relevant in mathematics, by the way. It's not relevant. Believe me, it's a bunch of garbage. And of course, then the conclusion here is, hence, symmetric property is proved. No, nothing has been proved because this here jumps from uh, condition to conclusion then back to condition and then back to conclusion again so it's it's all garbage basically it's uh, mental masturbation which proves nothing uh, accomplishes nothing leads to nothing except job security for abstract algebra lecturers okay so it keeps those incredible fools bilking you off your money to get a degree to learn all this bs which is absolute garbage okay so and the final so so-called property is the transitive property okay so this one here i mean th this is slightly more uh edible so to speak but still this here also follows from euclid's elements which one of his common notions says if two things are equal to the same thing then they're equal okay so that's the transitive property and of course uh, this here is not a proof because it says now if we assume that these are part of r then we get AD is equal to CB. No, you don't because you assumed that, okay? So you've actually proved nothing. And then, of course, uh, notice the hand-waving in between. There's such a lot of uh, verbal diarrhea that students look at this and they throw their hands up in despair and they wonder, ooh, what on earth is going on here, okay? And why do I have to memorize this shit? Because that's what it is. So... Um, this is the reason I get angry, because when I correct mainstream idiotic mathematics lecturers and teachers, they don't accept the correction, okay? They don't admit they're wrong, okay? And the first thing of an intelligent person is that when they're shown overwhelming evidence that they're wrong, they should admit they're wrong. Okay, that makes me angry when they don't. And uh, anyway, you'll see in this comment here, to which I'll place a link to this video, it's the first comment that I pinned. And this is the reason why I get all worked up, because mainstream academics are idiots. And I'm referring especially to the mathematics academics, not everybody in general, but I, I'm pretty certain they all follow the same BS. Okay, so that's pretty much it. If you're not already a subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about this channel. Contribute on GoFundMe if you're able. And that's pretty much it. I'll be chatting to you hopefully in the near future. My name is John Gabriel and this is a new